everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Career Technical Education. I am one of the hosts of this program, Ann Baldwin. And I'm Jim Beloga, President and CEO of Porter and Chester Institute and YTI Career Institute. And it's great to be back. We've got a great guest today because one of the things that we like to talk about with the blended learning that you provide at Porter and Chester and YTI, um, we should mention that there's not only online training, but really in the industry Uh, model labs. You've got so much great hands-on training for all of your skilled trades. And we're here to talk about one of the people, with one of the people rather, that um, has not only hired some of your employees from Porter and Chester Institute, but she also has brought in folks for the externship, which we'll get into a little bit of the details about what that means. So we've got Kate Shorey, and Kate is the um, Vice President of Operations for the Neurology Center of New England, and that's based out of Foxborough, Massachusetts, also home of the New England Patriots. New England Patriots. So, Kate, thank you so much for taking your time today to join Jim and I, and it's really great to have you here. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. So, Kate, why don't we uh, why don't we just jump right in, and why don't you tell us a little bit about um, uh, your employer, the Neurology, Neurology Center of New England, and uh, and what you guys actually do. Sure. Um, So we're a neurology clinic, and we have 10 providers here. We have three physical therapists, five MDs, and two NPs, and they're all general neurology with subspecialty. So we have Dr. Napoli, who is MS. We have Dr. Budman, who is movement, Parkinson, and dementia. We have Dr. Rodriguez, who is pediatric and also in charge of the spasticity clinic. We have Dr. Taylor, who who is neuromuscular, EMG, and ALS. Dr. Gupta, who is seizure, epilepsy, and in charge of the EEG clinic, Stacy Murray, who is MS, um, dementia clinic. Uh, she is one of the NPs, and the other NP is Carolyn de Beauport, um, and she specializes in the migraine clinic. Um, then we have our three physical therapists that are all neuro-based that do help assist with all of our patients here. We have research in the clinic, and we also uh, do provide for EEG wow. Uh, testing and EMG testing here as well. And as we have grown a little bit, we've now incorporated um, having other subspecialty come in to service our patients. We have our neuropsychology department that comes in once a week. We have our pain clinic that comes in twice a year. We have neurosurgery that is now coming in three times. I'm sorry, not a year, a a month, each of these. Um, Neurosurgery that is coming in three times a month, and then urology who's coming in twice a month. Um, So we're providing all of um, the services to have all in one area, so they do not have to go into Boston. Now, that sounds great. I mean, it's a one-stop shop. I mean, I can't believe the depth and breadth of services Mm -hmm. that your uh, center provides. I mean, it's... uh... It's pretty impressive. It really is. So, Kate, tell us a little bit about how your relationship with Porter and Chester began. It began about five years ago. Um, I knew one of the employees there, and they had asked me to go on the advisory board. And this is when I was a medical assistant. So I've transitioned into this position over the last five years. Um, So I would be on the board assisting um, or the advisory board assisting and um, giving ideas of what I felt that the students could benefit from by um, having externs. And then when I transitioned into this position, um, that's when I really started to um, be involved and have the students extern with us and um, then start the hiring process. So you talk um, about have that. I'm sorry, Kate, you you know, you talk about the advisory board component, and that's also something that Porter and Chester is very, very dedicated to, is getting the input, right, Jim, of professionals in the field as to what is going to be most valuable and helpful for the education of your students. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I mean, I think, um, you know, we make a very concerted effort a couple times a year to get uh, professionals like Kate um, into the school, um, now obviously, you know, virtually into the school, but... um, uh, you know, that input is, is invaluable because, again, we take her ideas and, and her colleagues' ideas and uh, we synthesize those and then incorporate those into the curriculum, you know, as we, you know, as we collectively see fit mm-hmm. uh, so that, um, you know, we're, we're best able to meet the employer's needs, um, you know, in, in the markets where we have schools. Right, and that's one of the great feedbacks that you get from employers is that your students really have you know the training that they need to take to get into the profession and go to the next step so what is it kate that you find uh, is what's the right word endearing 
<laughs> about Porter and Chester students. What is it that kind of you've gravitated? What stands out? What stands out, exactly, because I know that you've hired some Porter and Chester graduates, and then you've also offered externships to many of the students as well. Um, definitely. It's definitely, um, I feel, is the confidence, the positive attitude, and the willingness to train and be put in situations where um, it might feel uncomfortable, but through guidance, um, they feel confident enough that they will be um, successful. No, that's that's uh, you know that's that's great to hear. I mean, I mean because again, I mean, I think the externship component is sort of the icing on the cake, mm -hmm. if you will. And um, you know, as we as I look at our programs, our educational programs, um, you know, we've moved to a blended approach or hybrid approach whereby you know lecture is done online and then th the lab uh, work is done in our industry modeled labs and and it's then I, I would say solidified by going out into the real world and being able to work you know with um, uh, Kate and her team mm -hmm. in terms of uh, our students getting exposure to what it's like to really be you know a day you know a day on the job if you will and um, you know our, our externships are generally um, you know uh, multiple weeks long and um, you know again I think that helps students really solidify um, their learning so they they can take all the theory and practically apply that theory in our industry model labs and then and then they can sort of further confirm that by going out into the real world and seeing hey this is how it's done and uh, maybe it's not done exactly the same that we did it in the right. lab but but because every employer might have certain policies or procedures or protocols that are a little bit different but um, you know the the base theory and the base uh, skill is there, and um, it's great to hear Kate talk about um, our students having confidence in their ability, but also the humility to recognize that they are going to uh, need to continuously learn and adapt in in an employer's environment. Right, and if you're just tuning in, we're speaking with Kate Shorey, and she is the vice president of operations for the Neurology Center of New England, and they're based out of Foxborough, Massachusetts. Um, so one of the other questions that I wanted to ask you is, you know, talk a little bit about, you You and I talked before we had you on this podcast about your how you're still keeping your distancing and your COVID protocols, you know, for people not only coming into your offices, but also for the externships and the employees. So talk a little bit about that. That hasn't really gone away yet, has it? No, it has. And and we never shut down. We were always open. We just um, divided our space into three different units so that if a unit went down, um, then we would still have two units open and available. Because we infuse patients here, um, we have MS patients that um, definitely depend on their DMT, their disease-modifying therapy, um, which are infused. Um, so they do still need to stay on their schedule. So what we did was we accommodated um, for three different spaces. We had all PPE in here. We then um, created a different setup for people to check in online, um, doing temps um, and asking questions ahead of time to kind of keep everything um, compliant and to make sure the biggest thing was to make sure everybody felt comfortable. Uh, more so the patients felt confident that we were doing everything that they were supposed to uh, for their safety and then also for the employee's safety as well. Yeah, no, that, that's great. It's great to hear. I mean, I, it, it, you know, I think for a lot of us, you know, um, out there, you know, in the in the business community, uh, in, in in the education community, and, and and obviously healthcare as well. I mean, I think all of us making these transitions and and putting these different protocols in our businesses. I mean, it's just I'm always amazed to hear of the the innovation that people mm -hmm. have taken upon themselves to to make sure that um, you know patient safety is you know at the forefront. You know, in, in this case, but but you know. I would just say people safety in general right. is sort of in the forefront. Yeah. And so many of these workers, you know, Kate, this, and you know this, Jim, they're considered essential workers. I mean, someone's right. suffering from something. Um, things can't just shut down. Things can't stop it. You know, it's life or death for so many of the individuals that come into your practice. And we talk about that, that so many of the skilled trades um, that people take in at both Porter and Chester and YTI, these are essential workers. These mm -hmm. are jobs that have to keep going despite the circumstances and the good news is they have yeah absolutely so what advice Kate do you have for other employers out there that you know may not know of the opportunity to work with Porter and Chester and to have folks in as externs uh, to different practices 
Um, I feel when the students do on-site training, um, they can really have a feel for the environment and where they could possibly be working. And you kind of see the development and the relationship um, start there. And that's what I feel makes the difference, um, working with the um, other employees. And, you know, very rare do you get to have someone that is applying for a job kind of test the job out to see if they like it, to see if you like them. And this is kind of where you can do it with students is, you know, they've had this experience and now they know. For neurology, it's a very unique um, disease state and neurology is not meant for everybody. You know, medical assistants coming in, um, they might decide, oh, well, they like internal medicine or they like OBGYN. And coming into neurology, I've had some of the students say, wow, I never thought I'd really like this, but I, I actually, I love it. And now I want to go into neurology as a result of it. And then, you know, just to see that excitement from the students to make this transition, you know, to say, oh, wow, this person's really excited about coming to work and making a difference. And for me as an employer, you know, I, I really love to see that. You know, that's one of the greatest things is to have someone take pride in their job and want to see people get better. That's, you know, doesn't always happen, but with students, you can see it happen along their journey here. And, you know, you wouldn't typically see that where you're just interviewing somebody, you know, first, second interview, you wouldn't really see that excitement um, versus with students that are training for extern. Right. Yeah, yeah no, I was just going to say that, um, that, that, you know, that's, that's great advice and it goes a long way. I, I mean, I, I would say that, you know, our, our folks in our education area, our, our instructors and our faculty and and our career services folks, you know, are 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 constantly trying to match make, if you will, uh, employers' needs and and uh, with students' needs or interests. And again, to Kate's point, um, I think it's always great to um, be able to try something. And and you know, and and again, um, you know, our goal is obviously for every graduate, we want them, you know, finding employment r- literally right after they graduate right. school. And many so, do. Yeah, they, they, many yeah, do. Exactly. Many hop right out of here and right. boom. And you know, that's the thing about an externship. If you take it seriously and you apply the soft skills that are also um, provided to you by Porter and Chester and YTI, uh, there's a good chance you're going to get hired full time. I mean, this is this is complete evidence of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, and, that, and that's our goal. I mean, our goal is, I mean, as I've, I've often suggested to folks, I mean, students graduate on Friday and they start work on Monday. Right. You know, that that that's the way that's the way I'd love to see every situation occur. I mean, um, and hopefully they have their jobs before then, like Kate suggested. I mean, these students, you know, our goal is to put students on externships that would hire them Mm -hmm. and it's a great chance for the employer as well as the student to um you know as kate mentioned you know become passionate about each other in terms of the services that are provided and uh, how that matches the uh the 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 prospective graduates um uh, sort of view of their career so it's uh you know i think it's it's a home run and and again kate i want to say thank you for uh, providing um, you know the externship site experience for our students uh, not only the ones in the past but the ones in the future and and again thanks for being on our uh, program advisory committee as well that's um, very helpful to uh, uh, to meet folks that, and now that we have zoom meetings it's actually I'm going to actually start to try to attend some of these because again when they were all physical um, they were much more difficult right. because we we generally had a week of um, of uh, program advisory committee meetings and and I can only be in one place at one time, so I, you know it was difficult to get to to many of them over time. But uh, it's it's great to, uh, it's great that you um, participate and, and, and help out uh, you know us and, and, and the broader community uh, through your service there. So thanks again. Right, and if folks want more information on the externship program or any of the programs at Porter and Chester Institute or YTI Career Institute, you can go to porterchester.edu or yti.edu. Kate, I can't thank you enough for your time and really we appreciate all the kind words and we just, you know, hope for you continued success up there at Neurology Center of New England. And of course, we want to thank all of you for tuning in to this edition of Inside Career Technical Education.